It's Monday, which a lot of people don't seem to like. But here on this channel, that means it's Bachelorette Recap Night. So buckle in because I'm Crystal and I'm here to lead you through another episode of exciting love. And of course, coming along with me will be my co-host Leanne. Leanne here. And I believe someone else just got here. Hi. Some time. What up, Bachelor Nation? That's cow. Uh, oh, we get a two on one this week. Woohoo! And now it's time for Crystal and Leanne's Bachelorette Recap. Yeah. They've left the Bachelor Mansion to the only place where anyone should ever go to find love Las Vegas, baby. This show. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Producer of the Year award goes to this episode because they found a sign that says Virgin River and made Colton go on a one-on-one -on -one date at Virgin River. <laughs> There's not much more you can say about it. Do you think this is the episode we find out that he's a virgin? Or that Becca finds out we already know? I think it would be funnier if it wasn't the episode where we found out. Right, and I agree. it was just some clever editing way early from this producer. I agree. I literally cannot think of anything less romantic than riding a camel through the desert and uh, Colton's face says that he feels the same. So uh, Colton, um, how did your last relationship end? Uh, well, she broke up with me. Oh no, why? That's so sad. Because she's an Olympic gymnast and she had to go train. <laughs> and also I wouldn't put out. <laughs> Raisman is the gold medal winner of Broken Hearts. Wait, how come Colton's allowed to be falling in love, but she kicked Jean Blanc to the curb for falling in love? So, all of the creativity the producers had on the Virgin River went straight through the door when they created another date where these guys have to write songs to Becca and then perform them. Terribly. Perform them terribly. I don't know if Becca was like literally the only thing I care about is if people sing to me and so they, there will probably be another song date is my guess. <laughs> yeah, she must have a type. We should dig up her exes and see how many of them were lumberjacks and bands. We're sitting here discussing this group date and I think I would definitely leave if I were to, if they told me I had to do this. Yeah, there's no way that I would do it. I don't know what that's showing Becca. How is that any bit of love? And I don't think she would have done it for Ari either. Leanne, can you tell me how Lincoln is still on this show? Purely on accent only. I can't think of anything else because he's like a human bobblehead. He is the biggest head I've ever seen in my life. And he shits on the floor. I cannot stress that enough. Do you have an idea? <laughs> Blanks. Like you were saying, Leanne, it's not okay for Jean Blanc, but it's okay for Colton and Blake. P.S. Blake, Colton beat you to it. And if you're not watching and don't know what I'm talking about, I mean the I am effing in love with you. However, Jean Blanc was a creep in his delivery and she was not feeling it and he was ignoring her clear signs that she wasn't feeling it. Damn it, Chicken David, I just want to love you, but you're so obnoxious. So Chicken David and Model Jordan are on their one-on-one. -on -one. Classic move, Chicken David, Chicken David tattled on Model Jordan. Hey Cal, what do you think of Chicken David now? Chicken David was a jerk, even to Jordan, who's a complete idiot. We don't know who's going home yet. The other thing that happened is Model Jordan, in defending himself, decided to tell a word vomit of sob stories from he growing did. up. It it's, seemed like a desperate move to me. I would agree. He uh, went into how he didn't have electricity and his mom has mental health issues. And, more than one. Yeah. It just felt like grasping, but I mean, he's sort of acting the way he has the whole time. He's been pretty consistent. Yeah, if I were if I were on the date and I had to keep one, you all know, Model Jordan's my dude. <laughs> Who would you keep? If Neither. You, if you had pick to. A, leave them both in the desert with only each other. If you had to pick. Model Jordan, he's more consistent. Chicken I, David is a little whiner. I think Colton is going to be the most sad from all of this. He seems to love the two of them. <laughs> I have not appreciated Colton at all until watching him sit in between Chicken David and Model Jordan. It was like the most comedic relief I've seen this entire season. 201 could be summed up by the joke that Model Jordan just said. Hey, Lindsay, why did the chicken cross the road? 
to get left alone in the desert. Do you have thoughts on Chicken David? I'd also like to end this segment by each of us saying something that's a little bit more upsetting than a guy saying he's settling for you. Exhibit A. You smell like onions. I wasn't funny. I hate you. <laughs> that you thought I was fugly. I don't like you. That you didn't want to be with me. You're not attractive. Get away from me. <laughs> there are a lot of things. I mean, that's not nice, but like there are a lot of things that would upset me equally, if not more. So Becca, what do you do on the weekends? Well, on Saturdays, I like to read and then spend some time outside. And then on Sundays, I usually go to church with my friends and then I go out to eat and spend time with my family. What do you do on the weekends? Gym, face, hair. Oh, um, so is modeling at all like Zoolander? 100%. So models are dumb? Yeah, pretty much. All models? Yeah. Okay, so I can't give you this. Man, yeah, there's always Tinder. So as Becca watches fireworks alone in Vegas, we say our final goodbyes to Model Jordan. You will forever be in my heart, dude. I think something that we can all take away from two-on-one dates is that if you've landed yourself on the two-on-one date, you are the last resort and the second to last resort for a marriage proposal so no need to duke it out because whoever wins the rose is going home next week so you probably don't embarrass yourself probably shouldn't talk during it i'd also like to retract my previous statements about garrett because i want to go in unbiased by the information about his social media so if i weren't a nerd listening to bachelor podcasts all day i wouldn't know about that and and i would feel N literally nothing toward Garrett. He still looks like the bad dad from the lucky one or whatever, but I would just feel nothing toward him at all because he just is like not bad or good. So Jimmy Neutron, Chris, saw the gap left by Model Jordan and Chicken David and snuggled himself right up in there, but he picked Wills as his enemy and Wills was not having it. I would typically be annoyed with both Will's and Chris's behavior in that scenario, but I almost feel like Will's could tell that Becca didn't want to talk to Chris anymore and that's why he acted that way, but I had like hardcore third-party bystander embarrassment weirdness for that whole situation. It was gross. <laughs> First off, okay, he asked Will's for permission to stay with Becca after Becca said no. And Wills got up and I think any man who defers to a man after a woman tells her opinion can go jump off a bridge. Especially this guy. He's the worst. He's like gaslighting her left and right. Yeah. But it's kind of weird because she seems like she might actually have feelings for him. It seems like she's having a hard time just letting him go. I mean, we didn't like him from the beginning because he looks like a banker. Yeah, send him a cartoon <laughs> banker. Bye. Cartoon. Yeah, but man, Wills, him in that plaid mm. suit. Mm. He's wearing, winning all of the points. That suit ain't wearing him. He's wearing it. <gasps> I'm so sad and mad at you, Becca. Becca's a big dum dum. Becca just sent home perfect John. You know how many Venmo dollars he has. Justice for John, man. Venmo is lit. And she kept blinking. This is bull. The racist is still here, too. Yeah. Over John. John made Venmo. You deserve better, John. What a class act. Aww. Another week down for Bachelorette Becca. I've got a lot of question marks on some of the guys that are left. Leo, Lincoln, Chris, Connor, Fake Blake. Fake yeah. Blake. The two on one certainly delivered this week. And who's your star of the week? Wills, for sure. I would also go with a Wills, though RIP John, I miss you. Leanne, who's your star of the week? Star of the week is Blake, who said that he was falling in love and didn't get crapped on, which I really appreciated. All right, Lindsay won't be here next week. I don't know if I'll have access to a television. We'll try and get we'll her see. remarks. If not, you'll have me and your uh, lovely co-host Leanne. Okay, until then, goodbye.